The second speaker in this session is Executive Director at PASU, Mr. Yoon Kyung Koo. The title of his presentation is NFT Token Structure to Distribute Encrypted Content. Good afternoon. As introduced, I'm Yoon Kyung Koo. I'm, I'm responsible for R&D at PASU. We are working on encrypted documentation like Word and Hangul, and we are trying to protect copyright of the documents. For that, we are using access control. That is part of our key business areas. In this presentation, I'd like to talk about how we can apply this approach to NFT tokens. As you may well know, NFT has characteristics of blockchain. It is different from generic token. It is irreplaceable, and you can claim the exclusive right to NFT if you have one. And it is also a tool for proof of ownership. It can represent a digital assets as well as assets in the real world. What is interesting about NFTs is this is always identifiable. So you can trade NFTs. Basically, you can use encrypted wallets to transfer ownership of an NFT. And you can also use a more com complicated and sophisticated financial transaction. You can split NFTs to own part of it. For example, this is one of the options you can use. You can use this approach. The original token can be s deposited in this vault. You can issue split it, a split fraction, and the split fractions can be issued as well. There's only one original token, but it can be split, it, split into different parts for transactions. The access control to copyrighted NFT work requires encryption. NFT copyrighted work in general provides ownership guarantees and guarantee of the original copy and as i said earlier nft is not replaceable but there is no limit in access basically and there are different types of digital copies that are identifiable So in general, when it comes to copyrighted work, we often use this approach called EEDIM. This is used for stories of documents. The original copies are not distributed randomly. They are distributed through encryption. If we have uh, access authentication, you can use, you will be provided with a description decryption key. You can use the decryption key to access this copyrighted work. So encrypted copyrighted work requires a description key. Today, I'd like to focus on under the structure of a blockchain and NFTs. We can provide this service to have access to NFT copyrighted work. So we can add this new right. So let's take a look whether it can be possible. It is possible with a blockchain. Let's say there is original copyrighted work and you can issue a, an NFT token to it. And here, the token is in the form of encrypted NFT tokens. And decryption key 
gives you a chance to look into the encrypted document. You can open the document with decryption key. Basically, I already told you the basic idea of this approach. So this is the structure of the encrypted token. So let me briefly tell you how you can take a look at the encrypted copyrighted work by using the, a description key. This is also called a symmetric key. There is a public key and there is a private key. If you use a pri public key for encryption, you can use a private key. So the two keys are in a, rela in a symmetric relation. And public keys are open to everyone. Private keys, as the name says, it is exclusive to you, for example. And there is a symmetric key. Symmetric key can be used for encryption as well as decryption. There is a big difference between a symmetric key and a public key. The symmetric key is very slow because it requires a large amount of computation. A, a symmetric key, public key is slow and a symmetric key is much faster compared to a public key. When we say we encrypt and decrypt content, this is the approach and method we can use. The content itself contains a large amount of data. So it is very risky to use a symmetric key to encrypt and decrypt. It. So we use a public key. Let's say there is a, an NTF token issued. So you can use your symmetric key to encrypt the copyrighted NTF work. The encrypted key is a public key. So if you use the same key again, you can decrypt the NTF copyrighted work. So let's call the NFT token uh, an encrypted token. So here we are going to use one key so this key can be used to encrypt and decrypt the NTF. I'm going to call another key, content key, how we are going to manage the NFT or the content key. This is our basic idea. The content key is a symmetric key and a public key. So we are going to use this symmetric key to issue another NFT token. So this token is a generic NFT token that contains content. And there will be another key token that can be issued. And this key content will contain encrypted content key. So if you use a content key, you can have access to this work. That means this content key should be encrypted. In blockchain, you are expected to use an encrypted wallet. Basically, an encrypted wallet has a symmetric key, and it also has a public key. So when you, when you issue an encrypted NFT token, the encryption is done by a public key, and that means this key will be a symmetric key. So key NFT token will issue a token that was that is encrypted by a public key or a content key. Likewise, let's say you want to see the content then the content key should be recovered. And the content key is encrypted with a public key of the owner. 
that means there should be a private key of the owner and the encryption wallet of the owner has a public key by using that a content key can be recovered and the content key can be encrypted to look into the encrypted NFT content. So I almost told you everything I wanted to tell you in this presentation. Lastly, let me tell you more details on transfer of ownership. For transfer of ownership by using an encrypted wallet, what should happen? The content key should be used for the transfer of content key. Here there are two tokens, one content key and there is key NFT. The key NFT will have a different owner. It will, it will be in a different hand. So it was encrypted by a public key of the previous owner. So the key should be disposed. It should not be available anymore. There are many ways to dispose and remove the, this type of public key. Normally, the ownership or right is transferred. So without a public key, there is no ownership and we, this process is called burning. So we use this method called burning and a new NFT token can be issued by using a new NFT key. This is all done through burning. So the new owner can encrypt the NFT copyrighted work by using his own public key. In this process, you can transfer, by using this process, you can transfer the ownership of an NFT copyrighted work. But NFT split ownership may have to take a different approach in transfer of ownership. Each fraction can take the generic or general method for transfer of ownership, but the existing content key should not be available once uh, ownership is transferred. So the con content key should be burned. So when the key is reissued, let's say there are several owners, then key tokens, multiple key tokens should be issued in this case because the NTF, the tokens were split into several owners. With that, I'd like to conclude my presentation. I think I told you the basic idea of my presentation. We use an actual prototype in developing this approach, but we haven't been able to apply this approach to actual service. The NFT business there is still a room for it to grow, so we are still discussing it. And that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was Executive Director at Pasu Yung Kyung Gu.